chapter 22. Love likes to make you smile. Amber could not stop humming that song. You know the one. La, 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 la. I love you. She danced around her bedroom, admiring herself in the mirror. The big doorbell rang and she turned to look out her bedroom window. The only thing she liked more than her bedroom itself was being able to see the front drive out her bedroom window. It had a view of the front pastures and the horses were always running about and making soft sounds. She would open her window if it wasn't too hot outside and listen to them galloping about. This time she thought to see who had rung the bell. No one ever rang that old thing unless they'd never been to the ranch before. Most people simply walked into the grand foyer and took a seat on the banquette by the door. Marguerite had had a sensor system installed and it rang an app on her phone or a bell in the back, kitchen signaling the arrival of whomever. The app chimed and Marguerite excused herself from her discussion with Juan Pedro about harvesting the apples from the mini orchard and tilling up the turnips and potatoes in the garden. He also had the tree pruning in the herb garden to harvest. No wonder Pamela had hired him on full time and given him the gardener's cottage out by the old dirt road that led to the cabins. He liked his seclusion, and in exchange for the room and all access to the grounds, his meals, and any produce he wanted, Juan Pedro took great care of any living plants and all the grounds at the ranch. But 600 acres was a bit much from the old for the old vicero from Oaxaca, and so he'd politely asked if he could hire a few younger hands to help out. Pamela, whose job was to attract big money spenders to the ranch for her horse lessons, trick pony apprenticeship training, and any other lucrative ideas she could think of, allowed him a budget and a few of those younger hands he wanted, and thus came in Carlo. Carlo, at 18, was just what the ranch needed in terms of helping hands. He had a knack for plant magic, except where he came from, they called it brujaria. Now Carlo had learned this magic from his grandmother, and he kept all things magical, though, close to his heart, except where plants and animals were concerned. He liked working with nature rather than people, and Juan Pedro had promised Carlo's grandmother that if she let him come to Thunder Rose, he would take great care to watch over him. Not that Carlo needed much watching over. He had arrived at the ranch a few weeks ago, and Juan Pedro had put him to work clearing out the back pastures and mending the fences. Juan almost never saw Carlo, except when he rode in to grab supplies or wash up at the bunkhouse. He camped out on the back pastures and used the horse Juan Pedro had given him, a large mare named Rainbow. Rainbow liked to work and to be ridden, and so the two had formed an instant bond. As Amber looked out her bedroom window, clad only in her lace nightshirt, she caught, she saw, maybe she caught too, she saw Carlo ringing the bell, and then stepping inside at the insistence of Juan Pedro, who informed him that Thunder Rose folks didn't need to ring the bell. Carlo had scraped the muck off his boots and politely, head bowed a little, stepped inside the grand foyer. Amber, having caught sight of Carlo, immediately pulled her nightshirt off and ran to dress herself. Pink leotard, short mint green shorts, lace ribbon around her throat, knee-high socks, and her custom boots with the angel wings on the sides. She crimped her hair quickly and then ran to Pamela's room to spritz on her mother's bombshell perfume. She pouted and applied come-hither lipstick and sex-text blush to her already flushed cheeks. And then taking the stairs two at a time, she abruptly appeared in the grand foyer, just in time to see Marguerite showing the two men into the kitchen for breakfast. Amber, not one to go hungry, went into the kitchen, not without first taking a deep breath and putting on an air of come-hither that would not go unnoticed by Marguerite or Juan Pedro. In the time Carlo had been there at the ranch, no one had really seen him yet except for Pam, Marguerite, and Juan Pedro, and so they were planning a ranch family dinner with him in mind so they could introduce him to everyone else. 
Carlo, who loved a good barbecue like most at the ranch, was humbled by the warm welcome. And then Amber entered the kitchen as Carlo dug into a large plate packed with flapjacks, syrup, fresh eggs, and bacon. Having survived the last few weeks on beans, hot dogs, and Marguerite's famous cornbread, he was hungry for something else, hmm, and not just the food. Amber cleared her throat, and Marguerite turned to acknowledge the girl, knowing full well how she was showing up in that moment. Carlo, Marguerite said, eyeing Amber in such a way that said, button up your blouse and stop showing off. This is Pamela's daughter, Amber. Amber reached out her hand while simultaneously taking a deep breath. Carlo looked up from his plate and seeing Amber shivered a little in the cool air-conditioned kitchen. This was the girl he would marry one day, his inner conscience told him. Carlo's outer being smiled while he rose up between them as he deftly took Amber's hand, holding it just a little bit longer than most would at a first meeting. Amber blushed and slowly removed her hand, not ignoring the feeling between her legs and the warmth that had spread through her heart at the touch of him. Magic swirled around them and Juan Pedro cleared his throat. The moment faded as Amber, telling some silly story about how she'd almost ran into the woods the other night to chase what appeared to be a ghost, made Marguerite twinge. There was no in heck that girl would have run after anything related to haunting or ghosts. But at the mention of ghostly apparitions, Carlo's attention was piqued as he asked Amber to kindly tell him about all the spirits of Thunder Rose Ranch. Chapter 23, Moxie and Ellie. Moxie smoothed Ellie's hair and took the girl's hand, leading her to the forest clearing and setting her down by the fire pit area. Ellie was shivering even though the sun shone down upon her and warmed the area around them. The spirits of Thunder Rose had anarchy in their midst and they weren't sure how to handle it quite yet. Moxie sat next to the girl and took her hand. It can't be that bad, is it? She said, not wanting to frighten Ellie any further. I'm friendly, she said. I'm staying at Thunder Rose Ranch with the Cartwrights. At the mention of the Cartwrights, Ellie stiffened and dropped her hand from Moxie's. I don't want to get in trouble, Ellie said, sniffling. The old lady, she makes me do bad things. Moxie could only imagine what bad things the little girl might be up to. Ellie seems so sweet and unassuming. Uh, what bad things? Moxie was almost afraid to ask. Uh, the old lady, Ellie stammered. She doesn't like anyone around here. She told me this is her land and her space, that it's owed to her by a promise that was made long ago to her clan. I, I don't know, Ellie said, drying her tear-stained face with her sleeve. I don't get what she's telling me half the time. She cackles and sneers and says that I'm her handmaiden and I have to do what she tells me. You're no one's handmaiden and definitely shouldn't be listening to some stranger, Moxie said, feeling defiance for any young person who was being dissuaded by an adult. She'd had her own share of people trying to tell her how to live her life and she quickly tired of it and ran away from home. She didn't advocate life on the street, but by sheer good luck, she'd met a mentor who'd taken her in when she desperately needed it. She made me do something scary again, Ellie turned to Moxie. She wants everyone out of Thunder Rose so she can have it all to herself. What did she make you do? Moxie didn't want to imagine, but she could help if she had more information. She told me to light the trees on fire, Ellie sniffled, but I just couldn't do it. I love the forest, she said, starting to cry again. Why doesn't this silly lady light the woods herself, Moxie wondered. Why bully some young person into doing your evil deeds? She bristled and tried to remember that the best protection in these matters was non-reaction. Best to let matters take care of themselves. But still she felt the urge to try to help in some way. Where is this old lady right now? Moxie asked. 
She flew away, Ellie said, like this thing happens all the time. She got mad at me and she said she'd find somebody else who was more simple-minded and then she took her tree branch and flew away on it. Moxie, not one to discourage what anyone might have seen or heard, found the flying away on a broomstick reference a little hard to imagine in this day and age. She decided a talk with Edgar was necessary and that she would get Ellie Rafters back to the ranch and they could all decide what to do next from there.